Welcome back to The Morning Brew. I'm Larry Aarons, along with our co-host and birthday girl today, Erin Muffaletto, <laughs> in case you missed the big celebration. Um, and this gentleman here uh, made the cake, Steve Westman. Man uh, of many talents. He is. He's, <laughs> he's the guy. I shirt because of the frosting they got on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> so this segment is uh, called Check Your Local IQ. Please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now that we've properly introduced, here he is, the gentleman who writes uh, The Curious Townie, Steve yes. Westman in Local IQ Magazine. Hey, Hello. How are you? I'm great today. I, um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a teaser. June 8th, our um, Summer Destinations feature comes out, and I did my first leg of the trip out to the Grand Canyon, specifically at the El Tovar Hotel, which has a connection here in Albuquerque, and it's Charles Whittlesley who designed the El Tovar, but before he did that, he built a model, which is his house, which is our Albuquerque Press Club. Oh, wow. So it's this really cool connection with also another home that's a um, museum in Flagstaff. So there's my teaser. I leave for the Mabel Dodge Lujan house tomorrow, a bed and breakfast in Cimarron the next night. So it's going to be a fun issue. And I did see some of your pictures from the Grand Canyon. Yes. I'm a little jealous. So. It, you know, it was, it was, you know I, I travel by myself. Um, I'm also somebody who... I get sidetracked by those roadside attractions, so it takes me a while to get to where I'm going to be in the end. But it's it's fun. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's it. Yeah, that's all I'm going to tease on it. <laughs> I've got a big week ahead of me. I'd like to save as much time as we can for this guy. But to start it, oh. I got you one of his books. Thank you, <laughs> well, there you so go. much. Well, let's take it out then, so we can talk about it. Well, introduce our, our uh, guest, and uh, this gentleman has quite a resume, and uh, go ahead, Steve. TJ <laughs> English, um, and I'll just, I will say it out loud, it, he is my editor's brother, Mike English, <laughs> um, but he's this, he's this amazing writer out of New York City. Um, he comes to visit us quite often, and he's here this weekend, and so I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity for him to meet everybody else here. So well, Fantastic. TJ, welcome to Thanks. the Morning Thanks, great group. to be Thanks here. Thanks for being yeah. here. Thanks, Our for, little Thanks for having me. Local TV show. Yeah, here. nice. Uh, you are, uh, I, I'm looking at your background, and you're, you're not only an author, but you're a, an active journalist right. mm -hmm. as well. That's right. an interesting combination. Yes. Well, the journalism led to the books, really. You know, I write, I write nonfiction books and journalism about organized crime, the criminal underworld, the criminal justice system. Uh, I've written five, well, six books now on, on various aspects of that subject, you know? It's kind of an inexhaustible topic. I would imagine. Yeah. How do you do that and maintain your safety? Uh, safety's a big thing, but you just have to be smart about it. A lot of it has to do with uh, doing your homework uh, before you enter into an assignment. Uh, for example, a couple years ago, I did a big piece for Playboy magazine about the narco war in Mexico. So yeah. I was in Ciudad Juarez in the summer of 2010 when it was particularly violent time down there. Uh, the way to be safe is to set up all your contacts ahead of time, to have a guide who takes you into that world. You don't just wander blindly yeah. into a situation like that. <coughs> uh, and I take great pride in being able to do difficult subjects and come home safe and sound. And this book, Havana Nocturne. Right. Nocturne? Yeah. This is your newest book, sixth book. No, that's that's an earlier one. Okay. Uh, we we gave you that one because we decided that's the one you would enjoy the most. This is a book about the era of the mafia in Cuba uh, during the 1950s, before the Cuban Revolution, when the American gangsters went down to Cuba and kind of took it over and turned it into this uh, X-rated uh, Disneyland for themselves with the really? with the showgirls and the elaborate floor shows and the casinos. So that's where all that, that Havana. That's where that. Comes nice. That's where that era was created. Yeah. Really. And I went to Cuba and did research for that. And that was that was, of all the books I've done, that was probably the most fun to to write to research and write. That sounds exciting. So tell us your new book. What is that The about? new book is a collection of journalism, crime journalism, from the last 22 years. Oh. Uh, a lot of different pieces, which I tie together with kind of an autobiographical essay about doing this kind of work. It's kind of a manifesto about doing this kind of work, using the articles as a way to illustrate it. Okay. Very cool. well, uh, the new book is called uh, uh, Whitey's Payback. Whitey's Payback. Whitey's Payback. Yeah, yeah, that's the title of the new Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Uh, 
when you when you talk to these people, <laughs> how do you get them to talk to you? How do you get them to open up about their life and? Probably the same way you do it here on the show. Are they are they kind of do they kind of take it on as their job and they talk about their job if you will? Usually, yeah. It's uh, people might be surprised to to realize that people in organized crime, gangsters, uh, see it as a kind of a a profession almost, you know. Yeah. And the ones that survive it and excel at it. Uh, take it seriously. For instance, there was an old-time gangster that I've gotten to know who was in prison for the rest of his life for various murders. He was a hitman for the mob back in the 70s oh. and 80s. He's now in prison for life. I visit him every now and then and, and talk to him. And the thing I always notice about him when he describes having done hits, and he did many, uh -huh. uh, he takes great pride in the craftsmanship of his hits. Uh, the fact that they were done successfully, that innocent bystanders didn't get hit, that he went in, he hit his target, oh and got out of there. Now he kills mostly. He killed mostly other gangsters, you mm -hmm. know, within the yeah. underworld. But uh, wow, that is crazy. Is this the guy you told the story about on Saturday? Ma Did I tell the story about Mad Dog Mad Sullivan? Yeah, Mad, yeah, Dog, Mad Sullivan. Dog Sullivan. Yeah. Yeah. The only man in history it. to escape from Attica prison in New York. He oh, escaped wow. from prison. Yeah. So, so he was you know, pretty okay to talk to, but have you ever dealt with anybody who's kind of like, you know, almost that you're scared of or weary about? No, they, you know, the people that talk to me are usually people who want to talk to me for some reason or another. There's many different reasons that people would talk to me. Uh, the people that are threatening, I mean, I get into many situations that are are threatening and intimidating. Mm -hmm. That does happen. So there is a, it does, it does require a certain amount of street smarts right. and ability to handle situations and instinct, you know, acting on your instincts and all that kind of thing. Now, you've written some television, too. Yeah, I've done that also, um, yeah. I guess I want to draw the parallel. The people that, the, the real-life gangsters and bad guys that you've met, how are, are they reflected fairly well on, on, on TV? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I mean, you can probably tell. You see a movie like Goodfellas, uh -huh. you know that movie? We've yes. all seen that movie. Mm -hmm. That's very realistic in the way people from that world talk and the kind of black humor that they have. And yeah. uh, that's very accurate. But the average television show, uh, they look like male models, you know. <laughs> yeah. They don't yeah. speak the, the language of the street. So, you know, I think the average viewer knows when they're seeing something authentic and when sure. they aren't. So have you written stories then for maybe shows we've seen on TV? I wrote, for a, I wrote for a show called uh, NYPD Blue. Yeah. I wrote a couple episodes of that I... show and another show called Homicide, which was a really good show Great that was show. on the air for yeah. a while. Yeah. So also, I've done television writing and we're currently right now in the process of trying to develop one of my books into a miniseries for television. Oh, wow. Yeah. That would be on one of your crime stories. They're all crime stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a book called The Savage City, which was about a period in New York City history of hostil a hostility between the Black Liberation Movement and the New York Police Department. That's, that's yeah. an amazing read. Yeah. Really amazing read. Huh. Well, it strikes me that there are many untold stories out there yet to be mm -hmm. uncovered and written about. Yeah. Do you find that to be true? Well, I'll tell you, one, one subject matter that's endlessly fascinating to me is what's happening in Mexico and all the spillover from the narco yes. war in Mexico. There's so many dimensions to that story yes. uh, because it's playing out on so many different levels, political and criminal and immigration. And, and, and at a more violent level, too. Yeah, so that, that's a subject I hope to, to address and do more with in the next few years. Maybe see a book come out soon about that? I would like to do a book on it, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's such a big, vast topic that what you need to do a book on it is a very specific storyline, and that's really what I'm trying to, to find. All right. uh, well, all, uh, we've got your website uh, shown on the screen. And, Great, thanks and, for that. And people can find all of your books. and. Uh, it's an amazing resume. How, how often do you get to New Mexico? Quite a bit. I have a brother here, and I'm out here probably three or four times a year. I love to come out here. It's, it's always a fun weekend. <laughs> we, we, need, we usually need to go into detox after the week is over. Uh, but <laughs> That's <coffee>. okay. <laughs> That's okay. you got to come and have your chili, too, right? Yeah, oh, I have lots of that, too. Oh, man. <laughs> and I take it back to New York with me, and everyone loves it. Awesome. It is fascinating to meet you, and I'm, I'm looking forward to 
checking out your, your Thank work. You. And, I'm and excited to read this book. Yeah, look well, we're going to quiz like, you on it. I like how you said it's something that I might be in, interested in with the mob and the, well, the mafia. You, and are, the are you saying something like because I have a muffler name? No, we didn't know. Affiliated with the mafia or I, something? I was thinking of the glamour and the and the, the showgirls. Oh, okay. oh, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's what there it you is. go. There you go. Steve, and he's also so charming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing TJ over. I'm so to excited us, he was here today. Yeah, thanks.